What's that? I want to darken the background. The, the, it's very light. And I made it too light because I didn't, oh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I wanted the background to show because it's about, the, you know, during the resurrection time. <laughs> The cool thing about the camera is when I when I click on that, it darkens it so it comes out clear. Really? Mm -hmm. So basically, I, what I do is I set up different cameras, um, so I can just go, so I can go here, and I can just click here, and then I'll just get that, and then I can do it. Okay. I'm gonna bring up the address. I forgot. I'm gonna use this picture. Yeah, just don't go over there. No, right. Because I don't want to turn camera. Right here. Yeah. How's everybody doing today? Good. Um, okay, so this was a topic I wanted to learn about, but they got turned around on me and I was given the topic. So, um, okay, so uh, we're going to talk about the Antichrist uh, from an Orthodox point of view. Um, First, I'd like to start off with a quote. If somebody can read, um, can you guys read that? Somebody read that for me, please. Everything in this life passes away, only God remains. Only he is worth frozen towards. We have a choice to follow the way of this world, the society that surrounds us, and thereby find ourselves outside of God, or to choose the way of life through God who calls us to, and for whom our heart is certain. Okay. So, um, I love this author, Father Seraphim Rose. Um, he's very inspiring, and his, his words have a lot of depth to it. Um, so mainly what his point is that as we're living our life, we have choices to make, right? Either we're going to follow the way of the world, or we're going to follow Christ, right? I'm sorry, who is that? Is he Father Seraphim Rose, he's, written, he? he's an author of something. He's contemporary. Um, so, um, before I do it, move forward, I, I'm going to use you as an example. Okay. Well, since you're a man of great faith. Oh, my God. <laughs> no pressure, you trust yeah. me, right? You, no, I, you I know I love you, right? I would never do anything to hurt you. Okay, so can you stand here for a second? Oh, Lord. <laughs> so, I brought this. Could you use the or something? No. How <laughs> <laughs> would you trust me? I said no. <laughs> well, do you trust God? Oh, interesting. <laughs> he can see. No, can he see? I can't see. Okay. All right. Is there so, any auto or something? <laughs> I just want to point out. I know where you live. So. Are you going to give him like a, a stick and hit a pinata? Yeah. Hit a mire? If you want to. First. Okay. So, um, so basically faith, our faith is like this, that we, we're walking without seeing really what's going on. Right? But we have to trust God and that he's directing us. So matter's going to follow some directions. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, could you put both arms in front of you forward, all the way up, and take, no, straight forward. There you go. And take three steps forward. No, no, no. No. Okay. And then I'd like you to take three steps back. Yes. I hear you moving the chair. What chair? <laughs> Hmm. Okay, well, all right, can you just... <laughs> <laughs> so obviously he doesn't trust enough that he has to go around. So the idea was you can take it off. God, God so, said be wise as the, as the foxes. Okay. So the idea is that was he, was he faithful enough or trusting enough to sit in the chair without knowing that the chair was there? No. And that's the way we're living our spiritual life. We're going, but only if I'm absolutely certain that I can make this step and it's a solid step. I'm not willing to take that step of faith, right? So I brought, and there's a lot of questions in my heart that I say, what is my faith based on then, right? Is it based on my knowledge? Is it based on, you know, my time and how I live my life? Um, is it based on love? Is it based on my prayers? Like when my prayers are being answered or so forth? Is it based on signs or miracles? So, it's just something to think about. <clears throat> so, 
when you're thinking about your faith, um, and because we're going to be talking about the Antichrist, this is where it's going to come down to at the end. So before we get into the Antichrist himself, let's first talk about a little bit about the angels themselves, since uh, Satan was an angel. So if somebody can read this. Angel. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> For when God said, let there be light, and there was light, if we are justified in understanding in this light, the creation of the angels, then certainly they were created partakers of the eternal light, which is unchangeable with some of God, by which all things were made. So my question initially was, to myself, was when were the angels created? Right? <coughs> they obviously were created before Adam and Eve, but exactly when? So, and before the sun and the moon and the, the earth, and the planets and so forth. So he created when he created light, and then he created, uh, you know, that that light was good. But then he goes on to divide that light between light and darkness, right? If you can continue. Go ahead, Mary. <laughs> but between that light, which is the holy company of the angels, spiritually radiant with the illumination of the truth, and the opposing darkness, which is the Noisome uh, foulness of the spiritual condition of those angels who are turned away from the light of the righteousness. Only he himself could divide from whom their wickedness, not of nature, but of will, <coughs> well, yet it was future, could not be hidden or uncertain. Okay, so only God could divide the light between the light and the darkness. He knew there's nothing to say, well, it's a, it's a little dark or it's getting dark. There's darkness and there's light. There's no, there's no in between of it, right? So only God can distinguish between the angels who were of the light and who were of the darkness. Okay. So and let's talk a little bit about the power of the angels. These are just some a little bit of the scriptures um, from Exodus and Kings and so forth to just get a grasp of how powerful the angels really are, right? So um, Marcus, you want to read the first verse for me, please? I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn. So that's one angel going through and like destroying every firstborn, right? Um, Susan, can you read the second one? The angel of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 in the Assyrian So he killed instantly 185,000, right? Obviously, uh, as we continue, you know, the next verse is about 70,000. And even at the time of Christ, there was a violent earthquake, right? Such a violent that the angel of the Lord, and everything was shown, that he rolled back that stone. So we can safely assume that angels are very powerful beings, right? Um, and angels are not like actual creatures, they're spirits. So let's, let's look at uh, going to Satan then. What, what is his goal? When we say antichrist, the word anti is actually the meaning of, I know it, some people think it's against God or, you know, uh, but anti is means instead of or in the place of. So Satan's goal was his ultimate goal is he wants to take the place of God, right? He wants to be God, right? So, and the same way with Christ is that he wanted to take and have somebody to replace the place of Christ as well. And that was, that was where the hope was at. Mm -hmm. Right. God doesn't want you to eat from him because then you'll be like him. Right. And, and it was a deception to, to kind of make us fall so that we don't become like God. Um, or the, what God's plan was. So there is something that we have a warning from Christ saying. Um, somebody want to read? Peter? Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ. And will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. The end is not yet. Okay. So it's inevitable. Death is coming, the end is coming, it it is gonna come. I mean people will I mean people pass away every day, right? Or the end will happen. Just as the same when people were prophesizing about Christ, he came. It's just whether they were ready for him at the time when he came or not. Right? And are we ready for the time when the Antichrist will come or not? Okay, so what I wanted to do is kind of just do a kind of a reflection over uh, 
Now, there's many um, scriptures about the Antichrist in Daniel and Revelation and other areas in Isaiah and so forth. But tonight, today we're just going to focus on Revelation 13 a little bit. So, um, I wanted to reflect these two verses. The, the chapter prior to it is Revelation chapter 12. Okay? And um, if somebody wants to read Revelation 12.1? What the first one, which is 12 1. So it's the chapter before, but I wanted to reflect on how similar it is to 13 1. Okay? I'm going to read that. Behold, a great fiery red dragon, mm -hmm. and seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns on his head. And seven crowns on his head. Okay? Head. And 13 1. Oh. And I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, and it had seven heads and ten horns. On his horns, ten crowns, and on the, his head, the blasphemous scheme. Blasphemous scheme. Okay, so what's the, really the difference between these two verses? <clears throat> Three crowns. Where? Well, this uh, one says the, seven the, crowns, this one says ten crowns. Right, right. One says seven and one says ten. And also the placement of the crowns, right? So one uh, says seven crowns on his head, and one and says uh, uh, his horns. Uh, ten crowns, and his heads are a blasphemous name. So, the difference is, if you look in the beginning, one's a dragon, one's a beast. Okay? So, who is the dragon? Any thoughts? Satan. Satan, right. Right? And the beast is the Antichrist. Okay? And we're going to look at that in the next verse. So, now, we're not talking about a real beast, but we're talking about a person, a man, right? But he has the, the, the same intention like a beast. He's wanting to devour and to destroy. So, in Revelation 13, 2, if we look at the beast a little bit more carefully, it says, The beast I saw a resembled a, a leopard, but had feet like those of a bear, and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon gave uh, the beast his power and his throne and great authority. So, Satan gave the beast, who is the Antichrist, his power, right? Just like the God the Father gave, uh, when Christ came, he received his power from God, right? It is, they're one. They're basically the same uh, source. So, if we look at, um, so if we say that the dragon is um, similar to, like, if he wants to be like God, who is Satan, right? And he sends the beast, the beast is like Christ. He wants to be the Antichrist, right? Um, okay. So, let's look at, um, if we go back for a second, when we were talking about the seven, uh, seven heads and ten horns, um, when you think of the number seven, what does that come to mind? Is that a perfect number, right? Mm-hmm. Right? So the number seven is, is basically like a, a perfect number. It's used a lot in the Bible. Um, and when we think about the word head, what, what is, when we say you're thinking with your head, what does that come to mind? Hmm? Your brain. Your brain. Your knowledge, right? Your understanding. Yeah. Right? So when we say he had seven heads, that he is full of pride, full of knowledge. He's basing all his his efforts on what he knows. And he knows almost everything. Yeah. Except uh, God knows a little bit more than him. So, and when we look at like the cherubim and the seraphim angels, they're very, very knowledgeable. Right? And because Satan, he actually was a cherub angel, and because he was filled with this amount of knowledge that he saw himself that he is almost and becoming equivalent to God. So that's one of the reasons why he fell. Um, Basically, the share of angels are in charge of t using the power of God, and uh, the seraphim are about worshiping and praising God. Um, so, this is a good lesson for us. If we take and think about that, if we're thinking with our knowledge, and we're basing our actions based on just knowledge, and that we're so smart, be careful. Because we're falling into the same trap that the devil did, right? that he thought he was so smart that he could overtake God, right? And when we think that we're so smart that 
nobody smarter than us, we will fall, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not that we shouldn't become knowledgeable, but uh, knowledge with the grace of God. Um, okay, and that's that's how one of the reasons why he uh, lost his rank. The other reason is that he was lacking that amount of love. He was looking for the power because he was one of the share of angels. He was using the power of God, so that power. Uh, got to him with that knowledge and he wanted to overtake it. So if we're thinking instead of that I'm full of knowledge, let me focus more on that I'm full of love. Like the seraphim angels, when they're worshiping God, they're doing it out of their love for God. So if I, my life is focused on that I'm living a life full of love versus what am I trying to learn so I can be smarter than everybody else and be more advanced than everybody else, let your decisions be based on love. Okay? Um, so, in the, the part about the, the leopard, oh, and also the ten is also a number of fulfillment. Let me go back one more. So, the horns, what is, when horns on an animal, what is the horn used for? Attack. To attack, right? Defend and attack. To defend and to attack, right? So, he had ten horns because he wants to attack, right? And the crowns, when you think of a crown, what are you thinking about? Hmm? Achievement. Achievement, or more like in royalty, like a king, right? So he's going to take, he's going to become the king of the world, right? He's going to have uh, the ten crowns of all the world, and he will have one each with a blasphemous name. Okay. Um, so now let's go to first two, I'm sorry. So the beast, he resembled a leopard, okay? So when you're thinking about a leopard, a leopard is very... He's not like just out there in the open, right? He's very cunning. He's very hiding, right? And he's able to he's able to jump quickly on something, right? And that's a little bit about how the Antichrist is going to come. He's not going to come blasting from day one. He's going to come in secret, grow, till he reaches a certain <laughs> point. And then he's going to show his power, right? The the bear it says, but have feet like those of a bear. When you, if you had to stand toe to toe to a bear, could you take it? Yeah. <laughs> you could take on the bear. You can enjoy it. <laughs> so the the bear is very strong when he stands, right? So there's no one that will be able to oppose him. There's n he will be such of great power that when he stands against people, no one can stand against him, right? There's nobody that can overtake him. And the mouth of the lion, what is the, why is the lion like the king of the, the, the animal kingdom? The mouth is one of his, right? He, he uses that to destroy and to kill, right? And that's the same way the Antichrist will use. He will use his words and his uh, understanding to cause doubt and confusion among everyone, right? That the, he, roars. he roars. He roars, right. So they, they will fear him because they cannot understand what he understands. Okay, um, and then of course the power of the dragon, you know, like we said, has the same power as the angels. He was an angel. The dragon was Satan, and he was an angel. So keep in mind the amount of power that Satan actually has, which we discussed as how the angels have. Um, let's go to verse three. So and he and I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. Let me stop there for a second. What does this remind you of? Who was mortally wounded and then became healed? When I say mortally wounded, meaning what? What does that mean? Lazarus. Oh, oh close. I meant dead. Close. close. Yeah. Oh. Who, who, who died and came? Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> right? The whole point of the Antichrist is to replace, to do instead of. So if Christ did something, he's going to do the same thing to show that he is the true Christ, right? So he will be mortally wounded, and people will see him die, and then he will come back and say, see, I am the Christ, right? And all the world will be marveled, because we don't know when this is coming, but at that time, you know, things are not going to be the same way as it was at the time of Christ, right? And they will follow the beast. They don't know they're following the beast, but because they're lacking knowledge, they're lacking the, the love of God in their heart, they're following with what they see is powerful, right? 
Um, okay. And so part of this, and why he's wanting to go through this, is because he wants to say, <laughs> look, I fulfilled the Old Testament the same way as what you, just, what you thought was Christ. Right? So he's trying to confuse us in this way. Uh, in verse 4, so they worship the dragon who gave the authority to the beast, and they worship the beast. So we said the dragon was Satan, who gave authority to the beast, who is the Antichrist, right? And they worship the beast. Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? No one can stand against him, right? So it's not about how we're going to be smarter than the Antichrist or how to outthink him or to to uh, maneuver around him, it, that's not the goal, right? Our goal is to do what? To be full of love. To be full of the love of God in our hearts. So the only one who can stand against him is one person, Christ, right? He's the only one that can stand against the beast. Okay. In verse 5, and he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Okay, so we said the mouth was like the mouth of the lion, right? The mouth of the lion, he's roaring, he's saying great things that nobody can oppose him, you know, saying things that we can't comprehend, right? And he's saying things that cause us to be confused, but it's against God. Okay, so um, why why is he saying he's going to do this for forty two months? What's the significance of forty two months? Why forty two months? That's so specific. Forty two days. Forty two months. <laughs> <laughs> she told you. <laughs> she told me. Why? What? What? If, Think about, if you had to convert 42 months into years, what is that? Three and a half years. Three and a half years. What's three and a half years significant of? Christ's ministry. Christ's ministry. So when he started, remember he's trying to replace or to do instead of Christ. So he will do what Christ did to show that he is following the prophecy, right? So he is going to continue for 42 months. And this is kind of interesting. They, they said 42 months instead of three and a half years, right? Mm -hmm. He's on a schedule. What? He's on a schedule. He's on a schedule. Right. Okay. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme in his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. Okay. So, um, we, we already discussed about how he's going to imitate him. But not imitate him in glorifying God, but to, do, to separate people from God. Right? To... to do, Eliminate his name, that, that God is not who you thought he is, right? To confuse us, okay? So, when he opens his mouth, and he's speaking offensively to God, he's making a war, basically. But uh, who are the soldiers that is to fight this war? Huh? Yeah, say we, are. we are. We are the saints, right? We are the soldiers of Christ, right? So... <clears throat> It was granted to him to make war with the saints, and we are the saints. We are the believers. So we need to be ready for war, right? And to overcome them. He will overcome us for a short period, right? And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. He will overtake the world, right? And the only people that will fight against him is us, believers. Okay? So, it doesn't say that he conquered, though, right? He didn't conquer. He, he will overcome us. Like, he will uh, fight with us, and we will be overcome at the beginning, but just for a short period of time. So, and this is the part where sometimes we start to lose hope, or become confused, or doubt our faith, right? And that's part of why I wanted to do that example, is that we have to take an honest look at how we're living our life, our, our life of faith. Are we living it truly, that I am walking faithfully, or am I just walking based on what I really can confirm this is correct and that's not correct, right? Am I walking like I would love to walk the way Abraham walked, where he's talking with God, and he walked and he directed his uh, direction towards what God told him to do, even if he didn't understand why 
even if he didn't understand what's going on or what's the purpose, right? Okay. okay. All who dwell on earth will worship him. So when we say who, all who dwell on the earth, what, those are the people that are focused on the here, on the now. They, they're not thinking about heaven. They're not thinking about the afterlife. They're thinking about my life. My life is important to me, right? What am I to accomplish? This person has great power. I want to get closer to him, right? So they will worship him because they see this is their life. This is not our life, right? We need to be focused on heaven, on the, being with God, right? So even if he's making war with the saints, I'm ready to die for Christ, right? <clears throat> Whose names have not been written in the book of life. Our names have been written in the book of life because we are with Christ, right? Um, of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Okay. So, verses 9 and 10. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Let's stop there for a second. What does that remind you about the sword? Peter, Peter right? Christ warned him, if you kill with the sword, you will die by the sword. We are not to... Um, Fight violence with violence, right? If people are doing sinful things against us, we are not to do in return to defend, to say we're calling it that we're defending ourselves, right? But this is what we should be doing. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. This is why the, the patience is very important in our life. We need to, when we're faced with the tribulation or uh, warfare from the devil, or whatever it is, we need to learn to be patient, trusting God, that God is on our side. He's fighting for us. Not to take action into our own hands and start fighting back, right? And, and we need to remain faithful, not to start saying, well, it's a small sin, it's not a big deal, I'm going to take the shortcuts just so I can get past this problem, right? We, take, we sometimes make the wrong decision to uh, overcome a, a, a problem, you know? And, and that's not the right way we need to handle it. And that's part of the deception of what uh, is going to happen to people. Okay. Um, also keep in mind that we will be the minority. This, this war is going to be completely unfair. The whole world is going to be against us. Everybody's going to be against us. Can you handle that pressure? Are you ready for people that you thought that you is a good person is now against you? Right? Can you imagine being everybody in the entire world is thinking one way and we're the only ones that think in a different way? It's, it's going to be, it's, it sounds crazy, but it, it's already started. I mean, people are considering, well, that's normal behavior, which to us it's not, right? So we need to be, again, with the faith and the patience, not to be overcome by that pressure. Just because everybody's again in the world doing something, I cannot be pressured into thinking this way or going in this direction, just because that's what everybody else tells me to do, right? And it will become very difficult for us. But with difficult comes great reward. Okay, then I saw another beast. So this is another beast in addition to the first beast. So who's this beast? Anybody want to take a guess? His assistant, like a disciple, like Sam similar to like somebody like St. Paul, somebody who's going out and doing the things for the Antichrist, right? Um, <clears throat> and this, this beast is coming up out of the earth, so he's not coming, he wasn't given authority directly from Satan. The Antichrist came and he chose somebody who was born of the earth to become his uh, assistant who has two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. He looks innocent, but really, he's a dragon. He speaks like the dragon. I mean, not, he, not that he is a dragon. That he speaks like Satan, right? He's, he looks like one of us, he acts like one of us, but in his heart, he's speaking for the devil, right? Okay. And he exercises, this is the, the second beast, and he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast. So the Antichrist came, he selected a person who seems to us as a, one of us, and then his goal is to direct people to this Antichrist, causing doubt and confusion. 
right? To second guess herself. Um, and whose deadly wound was healed, uh, the first beast, the, of the first beast who was healed. Okay. Um, okay. So we need to remember, like I said, keep our focus on the things in heaven, not on what we're trying to accomplish here. Right? This isn't our goal. So, he performs great signs so that even makes fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. So, this is... Um, this is very important because sometimes I, I've heard many people say they want to go to Israel, they want to see the holy, uh, I'm not sure if everybody knows what the holy fire is, mm -hmm. right? So people want to go see this holy fire, I want to see it. So the question that you need to be careful of, or that you need to think about, it's nothing wrong with believing in miracles, but is, my, is the miracles making my faith, or is the faith, is my faith making miracles, right? For example, uh, the mountain that was moved. Was the mountain moved because it was a miracle by itself, or because of the faith of the believers? Right. So please keep that in mind that we're not to run after signs. We're not just because something. Oh my God, that's unbelievable! I need to go see it. Right. Because you're you might be deceived in thinking that this is going to add to your faith when actually it may cause you to be deceived. Right. Um, and it, the whole goal of him performing great signs is again to do instead of Christ. Mm -hmm but in the sense of that he wants to direct people to the Antichrist. <clears throat> okay? So, so our, let me ask you, I, yeah, go ahead. not to uh, redirect your... No, 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 it's fine. But when, when Christ uh, performed those miracles, yeah. how, those people were non-believers, right? So they didn't, have, they didn't have faith, but he was performing miracles. How is that any different? I know it's different. All right, right. But how is that any different when he was showing them that he is the Christ? Okay, so that's a good question. If you look at all the miracles that Christ did, what was the first thing he asked them? Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you have faith? Even if it's as small as a mustard seed. Do you believe in the Son of God? Do you believe that you, in, what, in who I am? And if they say yes, it's their faith that saves them, not the miracle. Christ performed the miracle, yes. And God performs miracles all the time. But it's because of our faith. Right? If, if the same thing as if Moses, who parted the Red Sea, the miracle didn't happen because God wanted the miracle just to happen. It's because of the faith of Moses, and he believed, and it was done. Right? But we, he already knew those people did not have the faith. And they did but not he believe. asked them. He did ask them. I'm and, with you. And, and if they believed, Weren't they healed? In fact, there was a woman who was healed without faith in Christ. The one, who, the one who touched his garment. Right, the one who touched his garment. Christ said he touched it. So that should send a strong message to us saying, just have faith. If you have a strong enough faith, the miracles will come. The, the most impossible things that you can never think that you could overcome will be overcome. Right? But we need to also have patience in our life. Mm -hmm. Right. My understanding also is that the, the miracles that Christ did um, were were for the benefit of, also, the, of, sure. of the people and the, and the, obviously causing to glorify God. Sure. The miracles that the Antichrist will do will not be for the benefit; they will be for His own glory. His own. They will be they will be things that make Him um, appear more powerful. It's not going to be for the benefit of those, and so they're very self serving and prideful right. and. And so the effect, the long-term effect of the miracle will not be the restoration And that's, of that's why we're saying there's nothing wrong in a, right. a miracle occurring. But what was the reason that, for that me makes, going behind it? But that makes a lot of sense yes. because they, they're, the way that he, Christ was going about it is different, much different yes. than the way the Antichrist is because he wants to be, he wants to receive all the glory, he wants to be glorified, he wants to be worshipped, blah, blah, blah. Right, right. Whereas it's all in this about case, it's, it's, it's different. Right. Yeah. No, but, so, but I mean, and I mean, this is, you know, it's going to be beneficial, I mean, you know, who knows what's going to happen. But, I mean, it, I mean, mean we, can point. we can speculate about, as to what he's going to do, but I mean, if, I mean, you were saying earlier he was going to, uh, one of the marks of the beast is to, uh, is to, do the same things that Christ did. Right. He, he, he wants to take the place of Christ. Right. So he might be doing things that 
seen beneficial for people on it. Might heal, right. heal diseases and, right. and raise the dead, etc. Right. And 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 look at you know his his purpose is I mean we could say oh people were following Christ but where were all those people yeah. when Christ you know they, they left him right so people follow when they see something amazing or powerful they want to be part of that right it's, it's just a, a crowd but to, to do something out of the true intention is that if you, I'm doing something and you're going to be committed it's because I hooked you that you need this power you can't live without it right. Um, okay. okay. All right, so 14. And he deceives those who dwell on earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. So, I mean, we have pictures of Christ, right? And he was wounded and he, he was healed, right? So what is the difference with the Antichrist? Same thing. They will make an image. They will worship that image, right? They, and the, they're dwelling here on earth. It's not like, okay, we know God in heaven and all this. No, they will do the same thing. They, it basically, it's a worshiping of idols. Okay? Um, and so those, those signs is basically to, to <clears throat> deceive people into believing that he is the Christ. Right? And some people even now don't believe that Christ has already come. So when he comes with this great power, it'll be easier to deceive them. Because they feel, one of the reasons why people may be deceived quickly is because they feel they're knowledgeable. And if you couldn't deceive me because I have all this access to all this knowledge, I'll do my research before I make a decision. Right? When he controls all the knowledge. Right? Okay. And, um... And he was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause many as uh, would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Can you imagine an image of a person coming to life and speaking? <laughs> it's, it's like unbelievable power, right? Where they're seeing miracles happening right there in front of them. Of course, they will be more committed because they're out of fear and out of lack of understanding, right? So, and, and as many as would not worship the image of the beast is to be done what to them? To be killed. For us who do not believe in this image, whoever it is or whatever this image is, we will be killed. We will be martyred. So I should expect that, right? The world is against me. We are the minority. Okay. Um, He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Okay, so let me, a lot of you aren't <laughs> that old, but if you take back, say, 30 or 40 years ago, computers were like, monsters. They were like, sit on a desk and that's all you had to work with. Then came laptops. Then after laptops came more digital devices, you know, uh, cell phones and uh, iPhones. And now we've got iWatches, right? Technology is moving us so fast that if we're not careful, we may be receiving, if, we're, if our faith also is not strong, that he can put the mark on us. And at some point they believe that I mean, now I don't need to, to even carry a credit card, right? I just Apple Pay or Android Pay or whatever, right? And at some point, they're even discussing or there's talk about people, well, why would you need to even carry your ID now? You just identify yourself by a chip on, underneath your skin in case you're kidnapped or whatever. You know, th there's all these discussions coming up, but it will come. Nobody, nobody 40 years ago said, what are you talking about? Pay with no credit card or pay with no pay off of a phone, a phone that's on the wall. You know, there was no such thing as cell phone back then. Right? So this is as as we're moving forward, we need to keep a watchful eye. Um and he, he obviously if we're going to live in this world, he's gonna use that against us so that 
only those that are willing to be marked can buy and sell and live their life. So it will make our life more difficult. But it tends to be that if we're not strong in our faith, we tend to go very casually with whatever's going on in the world. I don't safeguard myself. I mean, I'll just give you an example. Pornography is a big problem for a lot of young people nowadays, which was not a problem as severely as to them 20 or 30 years ago. Why? Because of the internet, because of the technology, the ease of access, right? Okay. In the last verse, here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Okay? So, if God grants you the wisdom to understand how, if the 666 is not going to be just, oh, there is 666. It's not going to be that clear, that straightforward. So we're going to be able to identify him, but not because of my knowledgeable ways of understanding the world, because God's wisdom. I have spiritual wisdom, right? Um, and, and the spiritual wisdom is only going to come by my faith. If my faith is true and I'm patient, as God revealed to Abraham, as God revealed to all the, the, the prophets and all the saints, that, that wisdom came by God's grace, okay? So... If you are living a life of faith, it will show in your daily life. It will show how you act, how you deal with tribulations, how you deal with others, how you deal with difficult people. This is where we need to be living our faith. Not just here in this classroom, but in school, in work, and with my neighbors. They need to see Christ in me because I have the faith. And if I'm not living faithfully, then who am I really deceiving? Right? Okay? So, what is your work? What is your mission? I mean, you have this faith, and God puts you here for a purpose. You need to know what your mission is, right? You should be always working for God, not working for yourself. People, sometimes if they're making a decision, be it based on this life, or what I can accomplish, what do I want to get, where do I want to live, what do, who do I want to marry, all these different things, because they're focused on the here and now, right? We need to be focused on what do I want to do and how do I want to live my life with God, right? And when you're living your life with God, then you'll be able to share your faith because you have the true faith inside of you, right? So I, just a couple of points real quick. Oh, and then I wanted to just share this. Here's the patience of this, the saint. Here are those who kept or who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven. This is in chapter 14, by the way saying to me, right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Right? Your names would be, if you died at that time, your, your name's definitely written because you were being faithful and you were patient on the Lord. Okay. So I'm not going to go through all of this, but I just wanted to show you a quick comparison. For point for point, the Antichrist wants to be the Christ. Right? So, I mean, uh, I don't know if anything sticks out at you. But basically, he has the opposite of who he was. Even number four, which is that he came from the seed of a woman, he is uh, the seed of a serpent, right? From a dragon, right? Okay. And if you look at number 12, which was kind of interesting to me, I, I'm, maybe I wanted to comment on it, but if you translate Jesus in Greek, it's 888, where Satan, his number was given of 666. And we already said 7 is a perfect number. So I don't know what that where's officially... The where's the 888 come from? If you translate the, 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 the word Jesus in Greek, and they convert that as counting numbers, it comes out to 888. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. So it's, it's very interesting how... It's, not that I'm trying to understand why is his 666 and his... Mm -hmm. eight, but it's just interesting how they're completely opposite. It's like seven, we said, is perfect. Right. He's below perfect. He's above perfect. That's the way I took it. <laughs> so, okay. Well, eight is the number of eternity, right? I think so, right? Is that right, Evelyn? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then even if you look at the life of Christ, even if you look at the life of Christ, Christ came down from heaven. Antichrist came from the bottom of his pit. Um, if you look at... Uh, uh, where Christ came to cleanse the temple, the Antichrist came to defile the temple. Right? Everything that the Antichrist has come to do is to do instead of and to do against. 
and blasphemous ways. Okay. Right. Ray, can you post? Yeah, I can post this on the on the Facebook. So let's. The whole point is not to get involved in like I can figure out who the Antichrist is and be very theological about it. The idea is I want to apply this into my life, right? One, number one, don't get caught up in the appearances and the, the, the miracles or the different signs and somebody said this, right? Christ already warned us about that. And don't expect an immediate victory by serving or obeying God. Just because you obey God, you're like, but I obeyed. Why am I being punished? It's not a punishment. You're in war. You are a soldier of Christ. Be ready to fight the long fight, right? Uh, do not be in a state of fear or agitation. This topic, and when I first started, it was a little scary for me because I'm like, I don't really know if I want to know all this. But we shouldn't be fearful. We should be embracing the truth, right? So if if I realize there is something in my life that I'm not doing right, or I realize I am weak in, then let me confess it. Let me repent. Let me work on it because I'm doing it out of my love, not out of being arrogant and prideful. No, I don't want to change, right? Uh, do not make, a, I'm sorry, do not mistake our purpose. What is your purpose for being here? Your purpose is for being a living sacrifice for God. Are you ready to die for God? Or are we just so caught up in our own daily life? Right? Okay. And then this is just the final thought. Uh, Mike, if you want to read this, please. <clears throat> uh, if, the sword, if the words of God are uttered merely as verbal expressions and their message is not rooted in the virtuous way of life, of those who utter them, they will not be heard. But if they are uttered through the practice of the commandments, their sound has such power that they dissolve demons and dispose men eagerly to build their hearts into temples of God through making progress in works of righteousness. Another great saint, right? So he's, he's telling us we have the power of God within us, but if we're living our life that is just words on our lips and we're not living it, we're not actually practicing the commandments. We, we're still struggling. Nobody's saying that anybody's going to be, become perfect. But if we're not trying and practicing and confessing and repenting, then our words really will have no power against all the devils that will come against us. When the devil comes to fight with us, he can see because you're all talk, but you're not, no action. Right? So it's all, it also reminds me like a little bit all bark and no bite. <laughs> right? So, okay. That's all I have. Any questions? Any thoughts? I have a question. Yes. Um, so you said it's going to be us, the believers, against the world. So the world is going to believe in the Antichrist and all that. So I'm curious, what about like other religions? Are they going to believe in it too? Like, do we know the answer to that? Like, uh, like who? Like, uh, like other atheists? Religions? Yeah. No, I think he's talking about Islam and, and Judaism. Judaism. I, well, I mean, it, it, there, I'm sure that if the Antichrist is going to be able to deceive many people, so he knows how to work with them. He knows, like, I'm with you, right, when he's really against them, right? So even, even that we don't, we don't retaliate when people attack us, but they still attack us. Why? Because we don't think the same? He's going to come across as, I'm with you. I'm thinking the same way with you. I'm with you. I'm one of you. But right? won't it be like his like, own religion? Or he's no. not now? Okay. He, he's, he's, he is Christ. His goal is not to uh, you know, come and say, I'm doing this and I'm coming to uh, sacrifice myself as Christ did. He's coming to take over the world. Right? So, and to take over the world means he's going to try to unite the world, he's going to unite all everybody, satisfy everybody's desires, give everybody what they want. And the, right? the, the Revelation <clears throat> describes him as a great order. What's that? It says Revelation describes him as a great order. Yeah. yeah. He, 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 he's going to, everybody's going to see him, oh wow, he's able to reunite this country, he made peace with this country <laughs> and that country, right? So, he's a man of great power. Nobody's going to be able to stand against him because what is he doing wrong? He's doing all these good things, right? But I, you know, it's a good question you bring up. <clears throat> I, I also believe that Christ works through the Holy Spirit to reveal Himself to other religions and other faiths True. and people. And if you know, there are people that are actually seeing that, and 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 they are drawn to it, and they accept it. So it's not any different than you being a Christian and you may be fooled because. Right. 
Just because you're a born Christian doesn't mean that you can't be fooled by the Antichrist. Yeah. Same thing for those that are of the faith. They're drawn, <clears throat> and Christ and the Holy Spirit continues to work also. So. so our expectation is that there will be at that time a remnant of the Jews who, are, who know the scripture, and when they rebuild Solomon's temple and offer the sacrifice and the fire doesn't come down to take the sacrifice, right. that they will believe. So, and they will, and I think it's just going to be a, so <clears throat> among the Muslims and among you know, other denominations is that there will be people that, that come to the church, they come to him. But I think what's important to understand is it's going to be a very polarized time. Like right now, when we have kind of that lukewarm, you kind of have some faith and some, it's not going to be like it's like it's it's going to be very separate, and you either believe one way or the other. And so it's very polarized. you're either with him or against him. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything I think about what you. Um, the political situation? Oh, that was worth it. That was just. Oh, I, do you remember Siegel? Uh, yeah, I think. I think it was June sixth, so right? The first Sunday. Sunday? Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. 